All right. Well, thanks so much. Obrigado, uh, Vanessa, you know, for joining me here today. And big congratulations, of course, on the signing with Bellator. But, you know, first of all, of course, I got to know how how has the pandemic life been treating? You know, it's been a very unique time for all of us. How are you getting through it? Yeah, she said that she'd also like to thank, uh, thank you for being here. Um, she said that even though things have been pretty rough with the pandemic, she has her own gym, uh, so she really hasn't stopped training, and she's just now waiting for her next opportunity. All right, very cool. Well, that's, yeah, that's fortunate to be able to have your own gym and, you know, these times and not have to change up too much. So has it affected, you know, maybe way of life? Obviously, you haven't had to change up too much training then because of, you know, having your own gym, but anything else did it change up for you? Ah, yeah, she said that a lot of, a lot changed right in her routine, um, but from what she can say in her training that she was able to continue her training. Uh, now things are going back to normal, fortunately, and now she can go back to breathe normally. <laughs> yeah, of course, we're all waiting to, you know, have things get more normal. Who knows what the new normal will look like, but uh, yeah, cannot wait for that. <laughs> but obviously... In the, this whole time that's been happening, everything, you got signed to Bellator. Very big deal. Big congratulations on that. So I got to know, you know, what was your reaction to getting this offer? I know you waited a long time for something like this to happen. And notice how did the whole thing come about? It's a good surprise, right? Ah, foi surpresa, né? Fiquei muito feliz. Yeah, she said that she was very surprised, very happy and thankful to be being part of one of the biggest MMA events of the world. Um, and now she's just waiting to get her documentation, her passport straight to be able to do the flight in peace, in peace of mind. Very exciting, very exciting stuff for sure. And I mean, as for Bellator, the promotion, I mean, seems like the fighters have nothing but good things to say about it, have worked with them. Uh, how has it been, you know, friendly getting to speak with, you know, whoever you've been speaking with so far? And I mean, have you been following, you know, Bellator for a while now and maybe keeping an eye on things? She said that uh, who had this conversation was her manager, that the conversation was between her manager and the organization, but that he told her that it was a great conversation, that he was also very thankful for this opportunity, and now they're just waiting for the opportunity to present itself. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the crazy thing, too, I think about one aspect for Bellator, at least in the pandemic, is, man, they have made this division so much better in this this little break by adding so many people and yourself included, you know, you add you into the mix and you could get a title shot right away. At least, you know, I think that would be fair to say, you know, former champion, your long status in, you know, MMA and everything would make sense. But, um, you know, it's when you join such a talented division now. That, does that excite you when you have all these great competitors around you and this chance to really prove yourself even more than you already have in the past? Yeah, she said that she's really happy. Uh, she said that everything's new. It's a new division. It's a new organization that she's going to be a part of. She said it's a big event, right? That sometimes she doesn't really have the idea of how big it is. She can't really fathom how big it can be. Um, but that she's really, really excited. Uh, she never chooses her opponents, so she's excited for whoever appears in front of her, whoever the next opponent is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to finding out who that is eventually. And, you know, obviously you said that you're still working on your documentation and stuff uh, to get yourself ready to make that debut. So I'm assuming nothing lined up just yet, but ideally, do you have an idea when you're hoping to get in there? I'm assuming before the year's over, of course. Yeah, she said that she's also really excited to get to know who she's going to fight next, but she's, she doesn't know yet. Um, she said that she's ready to fight, but that she's just waiting for the documentation for the, her passport to get ready. But she believes that as soon as that's done, uh, Bellator will already announce her next opponent and her next fight. <laughs> there we go <laughs> there we go <laughs> um and it seems like people are kind of, because of all the talent that is now coming into this bellator flyweight division um it's so stacked and there's so many options for the next potential title challenger now at least four of them i would say um it seems like there's talk a little bit of a tournament like 
that would be something new for you, or at least that you haven't done in a long time in your career. So just what are your thoughts on, you know, the possibility of competing in these new things like a tournament style format to, you know, start off your Bellator run? Ah, anima bastante, né? Porque, queira ou não... Yeah, yeah, she said that she loves this idea of a tournament, this format of tournament. Uh, the most exciting thing is that you know that you're going to fight next, that there's going to be a fight, there's going to be a new opponent, and uh, there's the thrill of trying to get to the ending, right? Trying to get to the final of it and winning it all. Yeah, definitely. It's nice to have things kind of right in front of you, so I understand the luxury there. Um, and, you know, I've, I've asked you about this before, of course, but I, I want to hear from you now that you are in this spot to actually do this. Um, you know, another one of the exciting prospects of fighting in Bellator is the fact that, you know, they're willing to work with other promotions, obviously, most specifically Ryzen and, you know, sending fighters, whether it's to Japan or have people come and fight them. So is that an extra exciting thought for you now to maybe, you know, obviously when things get more normal again, <laughs> potentially go and fight in the Ryzen ring, you know, if things permit? and you know working in the cross promotion part of things. Olha, se eu tiver a oportunidade de estar participando. Yeah, she said that she loves the idea. Um, as a fighter, she wants to fight, right? So if that opportunity presents itself, she would love to take it even more to get to know a new environment, a new organization. Yeah, and I mean, just to mention Ryzen, have you, I'm assuming the answer is yes, but have you fought in a ring before? I mean, what's the idea of that element to you before? Assuming you haven't, but I'm going to guess that you have. Do ring, você fala assim, do de corda. Já, já, já. Na... Yeah, she said in the beginning of women's MMA that that was how normally fights would happen. So in the beginning of her career, that's how most of her fights were. Yeah, okay. I, I thought so. I just wanted to make sure there because, you know, you've had so much experience. You've really seen it all, done it all for the most part. So, you know, that makes me think building up to this moment now, fighting on Bellator, having done all you've done, do you still get nervous for like moments like these and getting ready to fight on a stage like Bellator? Does that affect you and, you know, get you, get you a little nervous <laughs> still? Yeah, yeah. Ella, she says that, uh, no, normally for the fight, she's pretty relaxed. She thinks good thoughts. She gets a little bit tense with the weight cut. I think she said, like, as most fighters, she believes that that's normal. Uh, but for the fight, she just thinks good thoughts, good vibes, and she's ready. Very nice. And has it always been that way for you? Or was there kind of a moment in your career where you're like, all right, I'm used to this now? <laughs> No, sempre, sempre foi assim, sempre foi. Yeah. Yeah. She says that, actually, no, that she always felt comfortable before a fight. The only thing was really the weight cut that gets to her, but with the fight, she's, she's calm. All right, well, that's good. I mean, you know, I know that a lot of people get very nervous or the emotions run a little bit wild in fighting, but it's very good to be able to contain that. So, I mean, is that, would you say that you can attribute that to just how you've always been? I mean, did you play many sports growing up and maybe you just got used to that atmosphere of competing athletically that made it easier for you to be in front of crowds, whatever to take away the, uh, you know, the nerves? Yeah, she said that she's naturally a very chill person, sometimes even a little bit too chill, um, and that she, she really has a great routine. She wakes up, she eats well, sleeps well, and that really makes her comfortable for having a fight with uh, peace in mind. Yeah, awesome. Got to find whatever works for you, and sounds like you got a very good balance there, so that is awesome to hear. And, you know, of course, I want to talk a little bit about Invicta because obviously that was your home for a very long time in the fighting world. And, uh, you know, it's where you, I think most people will have known you from, but obviously your career stretches beyond that. But I'm curious, you know, you ended up being, becoming champion there and have had so many great moments. Is there something that sticks out maybe more than the others, whether it was in fighting with Invicta or outside of fighting? Something that is your most memorable moment from Invicta? Of course, you got the title, so I'm sure that's up there. But uh, something, something, that you that it sticks with you the most from your your time in Invicta. Ah, eu acho que na verdade sim. She's she said she's really really thankful for her participation and her time in Invicta. So that what stands out for her as something that really was memorable is her participation and the amount of opportunities that Invicta gave her. She said that she ended up having three title shots and when the third title shot was offered to her, she could barely believe it. Um, 
but that besides that, obviously, there's the big amount of care that the organization has with its fighters. They take great care of them, and so she's really happy, really thankful. Not just her, but her team, uh, her coach. Uh, and nowadays, when she looks back, she's just very thankful and wants to rejoice in the memories. Yeah, of course. Plenty of great things to uh, remember. And uh, I'm assuming did did Shannon give you a nice message too when uh, she heard the news or helped out with all that? <laughs> Nossa, ela ficou feliz. She said that Shannon was very happy and that she congratulated her. She gave. She wished her good luck. And um, uh, Vanessa feels that she can only be thankful for Shannon for everything that she did for her as a fighter and this long time in Invicta. She she's thankful with all of her heart. Uh, yeah, Shannon's awesome. That's for sure. So. Not surprised that everyone speaks so highly of her. So just, yeah, of course, who's curious about that? Um, and, you know, Vanessa, I think it is very, very, very fair to say that, you know, you've established yourself as one of, you know, the greatest flyweights of all time. And, you know, still got more work to do, which is crazy. Um, had a great career so far. I'm curious, you know, when you look at, if you look at the legacy part of things, you know, how important or like, what do you think that, you know, a Bellator title would do, you know, for your career and your position as one of, you know, the all-time greats, if you were to go and capture that? How, how impactful do you think that would be for the legacy that you've left behind to add on to it? No, se caso se conseguisse, não, eu vou conseguir. She said that it's not a matter if she wins, but it's a matter of when she wins the belt. Um, and she said that as she knows, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be easy. There's a long way there. It's going to be difficult. Uh, it's every fighter's dream to be able to one day to get the belt and for that to be able to be the proof of their hard work. Um, but that she's going to, she's going to do it. She's going to work hard to get it. And she's excited for it. Yeah, of course. And hopefully we do get to see, you know, you fighting uh, the Alimales and all those uh, Liz, Liz Carmouches, all the other, you know, fighters here very soon and whatnot. Um, <laughs> and obviously those are some potential great opponents and everything. So I'm curious, is there somebody throughout your career, all the great opponents you've fought, all the great fights you've had, is there somebody who sticks out to you as kind of the toughest opponent that you've fought so far? Obviously, long list and there's more to come. But as of right now, is there someone who like, Man, that was a that was a really tough uh, tough girl. <laughs> Olha, na verdade, sim, que eu posso dizer que cada atleta. Uh, she said that uh, each fighter has a different style, right? It's not as much uh, one is better or worse than the other. It's more of how the style matchup is, right? So she said that every fight was really difficult in that sense. Um, but when she looks back at the first fights of her career, she said that her fight with Chris Cyborg was very difficult in terms of testing her her endurance. Um, and it, she gained lots of attention with that fight. So maybe that was one that stands out for her. Yeah, I mean, that's a very good person to choose, obviously. And that is crazy. I totally forgot that you did fight Cyborg back in the day. Um, and I mean, is that crazy for you to think about, especially looking back and seeing what you've both done since then? And, you know, she's obviously a featherweight and the greatest featherweight of all time, one of the greatest fighters of all time, period. Is that crazy to look back on and be like, yeah, I, I, me and Cyborg fought, you know, maybe I didn't beat her, but I did. I did take my test myself against her. <laughs> Yeah, she said it's very gratifying looking back and seeing how she fought Cyborg. Um, at that time, there weren't many fighters to fight, so that fight ended up happening. Um, and she said that it's impossible to expect what's going to happen from the future, right? But it's crazy to see how now they're in the same organization fighting in different weight classes. It's pretty cool. Yeah, no, that is definitely a very cool story. You know, starting working your way up in the Brazilian regional scene and then making it all the way here. She's a champion, of course, and you're looking to become champion. So, yeah, that is very cool how it's uh, kind of unfolded itself, right? Um, and I want to ask also about one, one more one more question about past opponents because, you know, I think you have very good experience to, you know, talk about it. But, you know, Jennifer Maya, of course, you know, familiar with her. Um, just curious, what do you think her chances are against uh, Valentina Shevchenko? Because, you know, a lot of people right now think that Valentina is, 
you know, borderline unbeatable, but just having fought Jennifer before, I'm curious how you think that she will do against somebody who people think is unbeatable, like Valentina coming up here. Olha, é, a Valentina é uma nossa excelente atleta. She said that Valentina is an excellent athlete, right? She's lining up all her opponents in her division. Um, but she believes that Jennifer has a chance of winning. It's a matter of what her game plan is um, and seeing how the fight ends up being. Yeah, looking forward to that one for sure. And I think that people are continually, you know, counting Jennifer out a little bit. Um, you know, she was the best in the world at one point too. So got to give her some love there. Uh, but as for you, Vanessa, you know, I'm, I'm curious about this. And of course, I'm not looking at the end of the road just yet. But, you know, you've had a very long, great career, 15 year career. That's a long time. Kind of crazy to think about that too. Are you, do you have kind of an idea of how much longer you're playing to fight for right now? I mean, you know, obviously you're still looking as good as ever, just the champion in Invicta, but do you kind of see a point where you're like, all right, I've been fighting for a long time now, maybe should think about what to do next, but obviously not just yet, but <laughs> if you're thinking about it at all. Yeah, she said that she's already thought a lot about it, um, but she's still in great shape. She's still training well, working well. Um, she said that it's a matter of time, right? Time will tell, her fights will tell if it's time for her to um, throw in her gloves. But maybe when she gets, after, gets, after she gets her belt, she'll begin thinking about that. Yeah, definitely. And I wasn't trying to insinuate anything there. Definitely want to see, you know, keep fighting for a little bit. But just 15, year, 15 years, you know, a lot of people don't make it that far in a lot of professional sports. So that's something to be proud of, you know, a good accomplishment there. Um, and you know, just kind of looking back on it all, I'll leave you with this, Vanessa. One last thing. If you never got into fighting, I'm curious, what do you think that you would have ended up doing with these last 15 years? Maybe something that you love to do outside of fighting, like a hobby that you have right now. What is, what do you think that you would have gotten into if it wasn't fighting? <laughs> oh, I never thought of stay. Sinceramente, eu não sei. Yeah, she said that she, she really doesn't know what, 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 what she would be if it weren't for fighting. Um, fighting appeared in her life by chance, but it's what she really dedicated her life to. But she's, she thinks a little bit if maybe one day she stops fighting, dedicating, her, dedicating herself to running and a triathlon or things like that, uh, continue to exercise herself. Yeah, of course, always good to, you know, stay active in some way. So <laughs> very cool, very cool. But uh, yeah, I think that... Uh, that will be all that I have for you, Vanessa. Uh, this was awesome. You know, new, new, you were great to talk to before in the past and everything, but wanted to do it this way this time. Uh, so, you know, big congratulations once again. Thank you so much for, you know, taking the time here to chat with us. Uh, big obrigado, right? Um, and, you know, I wish you all the best of luck, you know, going forward with whatever it is. I think you're one of the most underrated, and underappreciated, you know, fighters out there, period. You should have been signed to Bellator the UFC a long time ago. So, very happy for you now that it is happening here. So, uh, yeah, just big thank you again. And I, uh, you know, wish you the best of luck, like I said. And, you know, hope you have a great rest of your day, too. <laughs> She's also very thankful. And uh, she said, very soon you'll see Vanessa Porto in Bellator. <laughs> oh, hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, we'll see you next time.